Hey, this is the great Johannes speaking again. What is inflation and why does inflation even happen at all? Inflation is the literal inflation of the money supply. It means more money is being created, for example, by printing money. Or nowadays, actually, they just go to a computer and they just add some zeros to some numbers and they give that to the commercial banks who pass it on to people who need to borrow money, for example, you. But why does inflation happen at all? According to the theory, some mystical, magical processes take place behind the scenes. Nobody really understands it, but all of a sudden, the economy hits a snag. The economy starts crashing. People don't want to buy as much stuff as they used to, and so on and so forth. And then governments have uh, several tools to respond to that, one of them being inflation. You can then use inflation to create fake money, essentially because the the government knows it cannot keep overtaxing the people, then the people might revolt. But if you slowly steal people's savings by diminishing the value of their savings, say you had 10,000 euros and you could buy a car with it, and now all of a sudden you still have 10,000 euros, but you can no longer buy the car with it. Because the price of the car has gone up, not because the car has somehow magically gained in value. The car's price has only gone up because the money you have is worth less. That's inflation's doing. Okay, great. Governments can also open the borders. <laughs> yeah, they can open the borders to haul in more people and so artificially grow the home economy, right? Or the home market, add more consumers and they will want to work. They still want to work for a Rolex or a BMW or some other fancy luxury item that nobody really needed in the 19th, 18th centuries. And all of a sudden we need to have a cell phone or, or a fancy boom arm, or I can't do my job right, right? We all, we all fall for the trap of materialism. So materialism is one of the main drivers besides sex, the desire to have stuff. I want to have this. I want to have that. It's a very childish you know, emotion to want to have something. Right? Have you seen those little babies stealing each other's toys? Yeah, grown-ups are like that. And so materialism drives us to inflation. Because, well, why? Why does the economy collapse? Here's where the scholars don't really tell you what's going on. They don't really tell you that there's a relation between inflation and population. In the United States, for example, you've had the baby boom generation. Also in Germany, after the Second World War, people started having a whole bunch of kids. So they produced more consumers for the economy. Also more producers, because people don't just consume, they also produce on their job, they work on something, even if it's a conveyor belt job, they still produce something, they add some value to the economy. And the thing is, there's a reason why we call it a population boom. It means it already peaked. If you've reached the peak of the population boom, that means afterwards, fewer children per family are being born. And by definition, that means Relatively speaking, fewer and fewer people are available to buy stuff. And so the economy begins to falter. And now the government has those two options left. Either we inflate the money supply to get people to buy more stuff so we can artificially grow our economy, or we open our borders to more immigrants. And I guess uh, globalization was also one of the, maybe perhaps the third option. With globalization, we could access foreign markets so we could uh, work harder at home with the same people, but we could sell more to the Chinese or to the Indian people and so on. But of course, they start to do the same thing and eventually it all balances out and you're stuck at the start again. So there's no solution to that. If you've had a population boom and then your population starts to decline, which is what is happening to all white people around the world, in Europe, in North America, South Africa, Australia, everywhere where white people live and everywhere where non-white people live, eventually the populations reach a peak and they begin to slow down. The birth rates go down. The number of children per family goes down. If your grandma had nine kids, your mom had four and you had one, right? So there's not enough consumers for that Netflix subscription anymore. They wish they had the nine, but they only got one. You know, through inflation, they're going to do price caps. Have you heard of price caps? It means you want to buy a burger at McDonald's. But because of inflation, I told you the money supply inflates. So really, the, the value of the money diminishes. And that means the price of your burger goes up. But perhaps your salaries are still lagging behind this process. And so you get a problem that, okay, they're going to raise the salaries like next year, but the burgers are already more expensive. 
this year. So you're going to pay $10 for a Big Mac. You're not going to do that. So the government steps in and says, no, 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 we didn't mean that. We don't want you to pay $20 for a burger. No, we want you to pay $6.99 for a Big Mac, which is still expensive. And so they put a price cap on it and say, no more Big Macs for under $6.99. And what happens next? A lot of McDonald's franchisers are going to go bankrupt because they can sell the burger for $6.99 as per the government price cap, but they cannot produce it for that amount anymore because the cost of all their supplies has also gone up. Well, not really the cost, I mean the price number value has gone up. So they have to spend more of that number money on their supplies and then they cannot really put that burger together for the $6.99 anymore and they just close shop. They just shut down. They start looking for other kinds of jobs to do. They fire their personnel. Hey, good luck finding another job somewhere in Texas or something, you know. And so that's how it goes. Companies go bankrupt because their, their supplies are still expensive, but they cannot really sell at the low prices that the government demands them to sell at. Okay, that means consumers stop buying those burgers. And this, this is not what we wanted. We did not want the economy to slow down. We didn't say that we wanted people to, to stop buying stuff. No, 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 no. We want people to buy more stuff. So now the salaries have to go up. Eventually, the whole thing turns into a mess. This is called a recession. This is where we are at now. In a recession, we have... Uh, this problem where we wanted to inflate the money supply to grow the economy, but it didn't really work or it backfired and people stopped buying stuff. No, no, <laughs> we need to get people to buy shit again. So we open the borders even more and we push for more export, right? We try to get more and more consumers in, preferably adult people. This is why governments around the West prefer grown men and women coming to the West rather than, say, saving the children in wars and so on. They just bring in, they bring in grown people, grown men usually. Why would governments and states prefer grown male migrants? Because they can work. A lot of the women from these more traditional conservative countries, uh, they may also migrate to the West, but they tend to stay at home. They don't want to work because they're still traditional, as we used to be, but no longer are. Okay, if the recession can be fixed, basically the boom-bust cycle starts over. We, we fix everything. Okay, here we are, and now we just go on for a while until we have another small population boom and the whole damn thing starts over. If it doesn't work, if recessions don't work out quickly enough, then we land in an era we call a depression. The Great Depression was a time where a lot of people were, sim were simply unemployed. I told you about the McDonald's firing all his employees because he can no longer put the burger together for $6.99. So he has to shut down. That means these employees have to look for work, but there is no other work. That's called a depression. Depression is when tons and tons of people, a growing number of people, cannot get jobs. Now, mind you that the Biden administration in the USA has found a very clever trick to keep hyping up the job numbers. He makes it appear as though uh, the, the, the economy is still growing because we're still adding more jobs. It works like this. You take one high quality job, they go bankrupt. They, sh they shut down and you replace that one high quality job with two low quality jobs. But the sum of these two low quality jobs is still lower than the one high quality job used to be. So now you have got two more jobs in place of one. So that's one job extra. The Biden administration can say, hey, hey, we grew the economy because we added this many jobs. What he doesn't tell you is that those new jobs actually bring in less taxes and less turnover for, for society than that one high quality job we used to have. This is called uh, degeneracy, economic degeneracy, because you're degenerating, you're breaking down the social tissue of society and you're replacing everything that was good with more things that are bad, but the sum of those bad things never make up for the good you lost. Okay, now we're in a depression town. And at this point, you're risking the death of your civilization, or at least the death of your nation. If you don't fix depressions, right? if you don't somehow get back to a point where you can start producing again, as the Germans did after World War II, they had some kind of economic magic where they decided to start paying workers, the surviving German workers who are living among the ruins, started paying them hard currency based on, I believe it was based on gold, so they actually started believing that the Deutschmark was actually valuable, worth something again. And people overnight began working again under uh, the program of a man named Ludwig Erhard. 
Okay, I can't go into that too much because I don't know too much about it. But if you don't do that, if you don't manage to reboot your society after inflation, recession, and then depression, and oh no, we gotta become productive again. Is it still possible? Can the Western world still become productive? Well, okay, now we've come to rely on the mass immigration of millions and millions of low-skilled and unskilled and some even illiterate migrants from wherever, from the jungle, getting them to work for us, but really they are barely competing with Chinese and they are competing at Chinese wages, which is no more than four or five dollars an hour. That's the limit of what we can pay these people. This is not a good idea. And why does this keep happening? Why do you have these boom bust cycles? The reason is that the sort of people who are actually in charge of our societies, of our civilizations, our nations, our governments, they, they also just have average IQs. The average IQ of the ruling class may be a bit higher. Maybe it's not an average of 100. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's 115. But that means that by no means are they any kind of geniuses who could foresee these great collapses. And they certainly don't read any books. I mean, the rich and powerful, why would they read books? They have people working for them who read the books. So they don't know anything, and they're not smart enough to figure it out, but they do know how to respond in ways that secure their interests first at the expense of the rest of the people. That's you. What then is a way out of this depression? How do we circumvent or how do we prevent the death of Western civilization? Well, first and foremost, by accepting that Western civilization is dead. Now we can move on and realize that the way forward lies in into groups of people from around the Western world. You know, I'm, you know if you know me, you know I'm talking about white people. We, our people, we will have to boot up new industries and new economies that will keep us going for a while. And you know what I think? I think it's perfectly possible that the material world of the high-tech age is also coming to an end and that the future belongs to the people who dare to embrace traditional lifestyles. We turn our back to modernity and to modern inventions and we start living with the hand plow again.